Hello, I'm David Coase, and I was scheduled to present at the chemical education section of ACS today, but instead I'm sheltering at home here in Pittsburgh. However, I think the tools I was going to describe for engaging students in large chemistry lectures are even more relevant in the current situation where we're looking for ways to engage with students who are learning remotely. So I'm happy to share this video with you where I will give a slightly abbreviated version of my ACS talk, uh, Active Learning with 3D Mole JS. So what do I mean by active learning? I'm talking about pedagogical active learning, where we're trying to really engage students in the learning process. And my first introduction to active learning was uh, this science paper here, where they applied all of the uh, described active learning uh, techniques from the literature to this uh, large enrollment physics class and had a really substantial uh, change in outcomes. And this involved many things, flipping the classroom, uh, various other things. Uh, but the thing that stuck with me when I first saw this was the use of what are called clickers, which maybe you've seen these uh, back before everyone had a smartphone, you would hand out these physical devices and people would answer multiple choice questions during the lecture. So you as the lecturer present a question and then every single student in the class has to answer, so they have to engage their brain. That you don't just get the answers from the people who are willing to raise their hand in the front row. And this meta-analysis here uh, looked across many studies and found just the use of clickers, uh, nothing else, you don't have to flip the classroom or do anything else, just using clickers caused a significant, a statistically significant improvement of learning outcomes. And so having seen this, I started applying these ideas in my own uh, teaching. So just a quick plug here, if you use Jupyter Notebooks and, and Jupyter Notebook slides for your teaching, I have this JavaScript plugin that lets you present multiple choice questions and let people answer in their browser. Uh, but really I wanted to bring this into the molecular domain, and it's a chemical domain. And we've been working on this 3D Mold JS project for online 3D molecular visualization for a while. And so it was sort of a natural fit to go from active learning with multiple choice to active learning with molecules, molecular active learning. And what we mean by this is you as an instructor can present a molecule to your whole class and they can bring that up on their own machine, uh, whether it's a smartphone or a laptop, and you can ask a question about that molecule and have someone answer. So I, I'm going to uh, show you exactly what I mean and then we'll discuss this case study. Uh, so here's uh, two 3D mole uh, viewers. Uh, and if I'm an instructor, I can create a session by creating on this share icon here. And you can just create, uh, pick a name for this session, I'll call it class, and then I create that session. And then I can populate this with molecular data. For example, I can pull from the PDB or from PubChem. And so uh, I'll pull out uh, this molecule and then I can uh, add styles to this molecule. And I have a session ready to go with a molecule of interest. And once you've created a session, the students can go here and they can uh, type in the session name and they can click join. And now they get to see the same molecule and they can interact with this molecule. They can spin around, zoom it in, translate. But then you, in your session, can take control. And whatever you do, the student sees. So you can make sure they are looking at exactly what you want them to look at. But then when you let go, they can get control again. And more importantly, you can ask questions about this molecule. You can say, click on the halogen, for example. And you click query atoms here. And then the students are prompted to select the atoms that answer your question. And so I can click here or here. And you can see over here as the instructor, you see how many students are connected, the number of users, and you see how many people have responded. So you can wait until the whole class or most of the class has responded until you show the results. You just click on show the results. And what this is showing is the number of students who have clicked each atom. Of course, it's just one here because I just have one person connected. 
Uh, and if people are getting the answer wrong, you can immediately address that and, and you can re-ask the question and they can change their answers and you can uh, refresh and see, make sure that they understood your explanation and then they can now get the right answer. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, we have uh, deployed this as a, as a test in uh, a large uh, organic chemistry recitation taught by Dr. Peng Lu. Uh, and so the way he structured this is he actually uh, presented a QR code. You can hear it, see it on the screen and also in the workshop that had the URL of the session baked into it. So the students didn't even have to type anything up. They could just hold up their phone and it would automatically load uh, the session, which he had, had already created at the beginning of the class. And then he had asked them questions about this molecule, and you can see them using their, their laptops and their phones to uh, click on different atoms and answered these questions. And one thing I thought was very interesting about, this is the first time we did this is a large lecture, is it didn't occur to us to actually give any sort of tutorial on how to use this. We just said, go to this website and started asking questions. And the students had no trouble just using this and figuring out, oh, I'll, I'll drag it to rotate it, and I'll pinch to zoom and those sorts of things. We forgot to tell them that, uh, but they figured it out pretty quickly. Although uh, I would say using things on the phone was a little bit uh, cumbersome because it is a small screen. Uh, one thing I would recommend if they're going to use that is to use it horizontally although you probably are better off using it on a laptop. And over the course of the uh, recitation, actually, we went from 50 students joining to 100 students joining, which is quite remarkable because there was only 80 students in the room. But what was happening is people went from using their phones to using their laptops, so they had multiple connections open. Uh, and overall, it seemed to uh, be quite successful. Uh, and most of the students actually got, got the right answers to the, to the questions, uh, but we could see that. Uh, as we went along. And so I'm hoping that you will also find this useful as you're uh, teaching Zoom, for example, and you, it's very difficult to get people to raise their hands to answer your questions. You could bring up one of these sessions uh, and see students' responses in real time and adapt your teaching to meet where the students are with their learning. And if you do use it, please send me a line. Uh, I'd love to hear about success stories and I'm happy to hear about any issues you have or suggestions for improvement. Thank you.